This episode is brought to you by IVP. Before we faithfully engage in our communities, how do we need to first disrupt ourselves? Check out the newest season of the Disruptors podcast hosted by Caitlin Chess through her compelling conversations with guests such as Tyler Burns, Andy Kolber, Walter Kim, and many more. Chess unpacks the ways that Christians need to prepare themselves spiritually, emotionally, and relationally in order to effectively disrupt the church in the world. Watch the Disruptors on the IVP YouTube channel or listen on your favorite streaming platform. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 19 through 25. Instructions at Kadesh Barnea. Then we left Horeb and passed through all that immense, forbidding wilderness that you saw on the way to the Amorite hill country, as the Lord our God had commanded us to do finally arriving at Kadesh Barnea. Then I said to you, you have come to the Amorite hill country, which the Lord our God is about to give us. Look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go up, take possession of it, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, said to do. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So all of you approached me and said, let's send some men ahead of us to scout out the land and bring us back word as to how we should attack it and what the cities are like there. I thought this was a good idea, so I sent twelve men from among you, one from each tribe. They left and went up to the hill country, coming to the Esho Valley, which they scouted out. Then they took some of the produce of the land and carried it back down to us. They also brought a report to us, saying, The land that the Lord our God is about to give us is good. Psalm chapter 28 by David. To you, O Lord, I cry out. My protector, do not ignore me. If you do not respond to me, I will join those who are descending into the grave. Hear my plea for mercy when I cry out to you for help. When I lift my hands toward your holy temple, do not drag me away with evil men, with those who behave wickedly, who talk so friendly to their neighbors while they plan to harm them. Pay them back for their evil deeds. Pay them back for what they do. Punish them, for they do not understand the Lord's actions or the way he carries out justice. The Lord will permanently demolish them. The Lord deserves praise, for he has heard my plea for mercy. The Lord strengthens and protects me. I trust in him with all my heart. I am rescued, and my heart is full of joy. I will sing to him in gratitude. The Lord strengthens his people. He protects and delivers his chosen king. Deliver your people. Empower the nation that belongs to you. Care for them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms at all times. Psalm chapter 62. For the music director, Jeduthun, a psalm of David. For God alone, I patiently wait. He is the one who delivers me. He alone is my protector and deliverer. He is my refuge. I will not be upended. How long will you threaten a man like me? All of you are murderers, as dangerous as a leaning wall or an unstable fence. 
They spend all their time planning how to bring their victim down. They love to use deceit. They pronounce blessings with their mouths, but inwardly they utter curses. Selah. Patiently wait for God alone, my soul, for he is the one who gives me hope. He alone is my protector and deliverer. He is my refuge. I will not be shaken. God delivers me and exalts me. God is my strong protector and my shelter. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our shelter. Selah. Men are nothing but a mere breath. Human beings are unreliable. When they are weighed in the scales, all of them together are lighter than air. Do not trust in what you can gain by oppression. Do not put false confidence in what you can gain by robbery. If wealth increases, do not become attached to it. God has declared one principle. Two principles I have heard. God is strong. And you, O Lord, demonstrate loyal love. For you repay men for what they do. Psalm chapter 81 For the music director, according to the Gittit style by Asaph. Shout for joy to God, our source of strength. Shout to the God of Jacob. Sing a song and play the tambourine, the pleasant-sounding harp, and the ten-stringed instrument. Sound the ram's horn on the day of the new moon and on the day of the full moon when our festival begins. For observing the festival is a requirement for Israel. It is an ordinance given by the God of Jacob. He decreed it as a regulation in Joseph when he attacked the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I did not recognize. It said, I removed the burden from his shoulder. His hands were released from holding the basket. In your distress, you called out and I rescued you. I answered you from a dark thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Selah. I said, Listen, my people, I will warn you, O Israel, if only you would obey me. There must be no other God among you. You must not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, the one who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people did not obey me. Israel did not submit to me. I gave them over to their stubborn desires. They did what seemed right to them. If only my people would obey me, if only Israel would keep my commands, then I would quickly subdue their enemies and attack their adversaries. May those who hate the Lord cower in fear before him. May they be permanently humiliated. I would feed Israel the best wheat and would satisfy your appetite with honey from the rocky cliffs. Psalm chapter 128, A Song of Ascents. How blessed is every one of the Lord's loyal followers, each one who keeps his commands. You will eat what you work so hard to grow. You will be blessed and secure. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the inner rooms of your house. Your children will be like olive branches as they sit all around your table. Yes, indeed, the man who fears the Lord will be blessed in this way. May the Lord bless you from Zion, that you might see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life and that you might see your grandchildren. May Israel experience peace. New Testament reading, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through Romans chapter 2, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. The condemnation of the unrighteous. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth by their unrighteousness. Because what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen because they are understood through what has been made. So people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give him thanks, but they became futile in their thoughts and their senseless hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for an image resembling mortal human beings or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the desires of their hearts to impurity, to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creation rather than the creator, 
who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged the natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. And likewise, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed in their passions for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do what should not be done. They are filled with every kind of unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, malice. They are rife with envy, murder, strife, deceit, hostility. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, contrivers of all sorts of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, covenant breakers, heartless, ruthless. Although they fully know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but also approve of those who practice them. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, the condemnation of the moralist. Therefore, you are without excuse, whoever you are, when you judge someone else. For on whatever grounds you judge another, you condemn yourself, because you who judge practice the same things. Now we know that God's judgment is in accordance with truth against those who practice such things. And do you think whoever you are, when you judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape God's judgment? Or do you have contempt for the wealth of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, and yet do not know that God's kindness leads you to repentance? But because of your stubbornness, and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourselves in the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment is revealed. He will reward each one according to his works. Eternal life to those who by perseverance in good works seek glory and honor and immortality, but wrath and anger to those who live in selfish ambition and do not obey the truth but follow unrighteousness. There will be affliction and distress on everyone who does evil, on the Jew first and also the Greek but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, for the Jew first and also the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For all who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous before God, but those who do the law will be declared righteous. For whenever the Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature the things required by the law, these who do not have the law are a law to themselves. They show that the work of the law is written in their hearts as their conscience bears witness and their conflicting thoughts accuse or else defend them on the day when God will judge the secrets of human hearts according to my gospel through Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. God, thank you. Thank you for the encouragement in your word today, O oh God, to go forth in the place that you're sending us, O oh Lord God, to go forward and to be courageous and not to be fearful, O oh God. And thank you for the reminders of the blessings, for obeying you, O oh God, and following in your path and in your ways. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that there is a reward for those of us, O oh God, who diligently seek you and seek to glorify you by the power of your spirits, O Lord God, not by our own strength, not by our own morality, not by legalistic means, O Lord God, but through your spirits, O Lord God. That is how we obey you. That is how we obey your word. That is how we obey, O God, the law given to us in the Ten Commandments. Would you help us, O Lord God? to resist the urge to fall into legalism and to think, O oh Lord God, that, that we, O oh Lord God, can save ourselves, O oh God, through our own righteousness, O oh Lord God. We have no righteousness apart from Christ, O oh Lord. But we thank you, O oh Lord God, for the righteousness imputed to us through Jesus Christ that enables us and empowers us, O oh Lord God, to live lives that are pleasing to you, O oh God. Now, Father, Lord God, the, that, that passage in Romans is so sobering. There's a temptation to want to put an emphasis on the unnatural relations, O oh Lord God, that were spelled out in your word here, O oh Lord God, and to ignore your warnings against gossip and slander and being murderous, O oh Lord God. Father, so many of us, we all fall under this, this category, O oh Lord God. Would you help us to embrace the faith, O oh Lord God, that has been given to us in Jesus Christ, O oh Lord God? It is by grace through faith that we are saved, O oh Lord. Would you help us to resist 
all manner of sin. We are both soul and body beings, embodied souls, O oh Lord. Would you help us to honor you, not only in our souls, but in our bodies, O oh God, knowing that we are crucified to Christ and the life that we live does not belong to us solely. It belongs to you, O oh Lord God. Would you help us, O oh God, to glorify you in every way and count ourselves dead to sin and alive to Christ, O oh Lord God? Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, liberty to obey you, liberty to love our neighbors as ourselves, liberty to love you with our whole heart, oh God. I pray this all in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Get in the Word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.